Hey guys, so during the 2020 hike where cards were going absolutely insane, I asked the question, hey, how come there are no Magic the Gathering influencers? So Logan Paul, if you remember what he did for Pokemon, he used to live stream very similar to what Pay Money Wubby is doing for Magic right now. I kind of wonder where's the Magic the Gathering? You know, I invested all this money into this and there are no influencers. They all went to Pokemon. So Logan Paul was just one of those influencers, right? But there were a lot more in sports cards. Sometimes the athletes themselves started, quote, collecting cards. And this, you know, you had a lot of celebrities. You had Drake. I remember the very famous, uh, very, very weird Drake opening, where I think Drake left during half the open. They were chasing the LeBron James one-on-one -on -one triple logo man. And Drake's like, F this, I'm gone. So even Drake, at one point in time, was opening sports cards to try to get hits. Uh, now he does gambling, which does make a little bit of sense, right? But anyway, when uh, you talk about the growth of these other card games and these influencers who got involved, I would definitely say that Magic has not had that growth. It just has not. And whatever you want to say about it, we do need influencers. In today's society, and today today's society, I would say, hey, um, why don't why why is magic so slow to the table? And it's because they spent all their money on the MPL. So the Magic MPL was their bunch of influencers. They consisted of top Magic players and other Magic players, special invites. And their number one, to give you an example of what who was being promoted at this time, Autumn Buccelli, who was a trans individual who won the second Mythic Invitational. The guy who won the first Mythic Invitational was never invited back to defend, and not even allowed to defend his second invitation. But Autumn Bruccelli was not only instantly made an MPL member, but was the darling of the MPL. So when you give somebody all this power, what does they, what do they them do with it? The answer turned out to be cancel people, uh, and that's what they did to my favorite artist Teresa Nielsen. They never really got the understanding that most Magic players are more akin to Pay Money Wubby and Penguin Zero than they are to Autumn Buccelli, who is a non-binary trans individual, even though a lot of people did rally to her. She had the Knights of Autumn. That was her group of people who, if you ever, if I said anything bad about her, uh, even if it, it was true and based in fact, uh, they would attack me. And you might think, oh, that didn't sound right. They sound like, aren't they supposed to be really nice and no, they were they were slightly better than the MetaZoo community. Uh, the MetaZoo community attacked me on my birthday of all things, uh, leaving me hateful comments, in, uh, which I've now banned them. But uh, yeah, that was basically basically the status quo was they used their power not to promote Magic, even though Magic promoted them all the time on Twitter and now now called X. They use all their power and the resources to cancel people. I mean, it's uh, it's astounding, right? Like what you do when you um, don't care about the game and you hate the pay, play, pay, player base. You know, it, it's one of those other things. I, I recently read a tweet, and the person still playing, she had invited her friend. Oh, she was playing... And a individual, and she was pe playing an older lady. The older lady didn't speak English that well. In fact, she had to call her son to explain what was happening to her. She, oh, her name was Nicole. And she said, hey, you know, she called Nicole a him. Nicole didn't like that. And she called a judge on the older woman. And again, the older woman didn't speak English. She was just there with her son, her younger son. And... That's not promoting the game. Those young people not coming back to Magic the Gathering because it's just so like, would I want to play Nicole? 
No, when Nicole wanted to play me, she specifically said no. Pay money, pay money, Wabi. There's just that enjoyment that, like, you know, that you can tell he actually likes magic. Same with Penguin Zero. You can tell the dude actually loves magic, and that's kind of, that's very refreshing because I can tell you there are a lot of mother of effers in our community who pretend and they, I mean, it's so obvious to me because I'm old school. I'm the oldest of all schools, right? Like, I play Magic in beta. How many players can say that? Not even Alpha Investment can say that. I actually play Magic. I had a, multiple local game stores. I can list them. When I was younger, I used to play at Radio Shack, and they offered tournaments. Uh, there was a card shop right next to me. It was near the Produce Junction, which is not really famous in that area. And they did Pokemon, sports card, very small place. I remember playing the first Pokemon tournament there, but they also did Magic as well. And I, it was a female child one, female minor one, because we were all children at that point. There were some adults, which was like lame, but whatever. And she had a deck of four Charizards. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And they gave her pizza, and they gave her some like fake mystery packs. It was not fun. And there was like a, something called BC Collectibles, and they sold a lot of magic. I bought a lot of magic from them when I was a little. And then we had a Wizard of the Coast store. When I was little in uh, middle school, that was next to the J.C. Penney's in the now dead Exton Mall. Then went to, went to college. I played in Midtown. I think with Midtown Comics and games or something like that. It was a huge place. We did. I did the Dissension pre-release with my not my roommates, my sweet not my sweetmates, my um hallmates. So I, I went to NYU and University Hall, and my hallmate, two of my hallmates, were really big into magic. And we went there. We went. We did the Dissension pre-release. When I went to college, I played at a place called Groovy Geckos, which then was called Phoenix Games and Phoenix Games Reborn. And Williamsburg it was the only store to play in Williamsburg. I actually played EDH in another place, and it was also kind of fun. It was like a sports card shop in Williamsburg. It was in like a nicer area than the card shop. Didn't like it. Didn't really have that many players, um, so I decided to just play at the other place. Very fun community. Probably the best time I had playing Magic in my whole life. Um, really, really enjoyed that community. Then I moved to Houston. Played at DNA Comics for a while. Had my own game store for a while. We did do events early on. I didn't love it. Uh, I understand community, community, community. But, like, I don't know. It's probably not. I'm not that type of person. So, I know who loves Magic. I know who doesn't. Uh, when there's joy... When you open, so when I open my own packs, I don't know if you know this. I, I've never, I don't open packs for other people. I think I had like a Patreon like a long, long time ago, maybe like seven, eight, nine years ago, where I opened packs for other people. It just didn't feel right to me. Like it was kind of like, okay, if I get a good hit, I'm excited for them, but I'm also a little jealous that I didn't get that good hit. And if I don't get a good hit, I just had to throw in like a shit ton of stuff for free to, you know, make sure that they're happy with it. I'd much rather open my own shit, you know, for myself. And luckily, now I own a car shop.